Music TT, one of the arms of Creative TT, is hosting Reverb the Experience for three days, starting from September 29. So to find out why you should be putting your name and photo in the accompanying image, it is time to go in-depth on the Reverb experience with General Manager Music TT, Melissa Jimenez, and the Chairman of Music TT, John Arnold. Welcome, Melissa and John. We are looking forward to hearing about the dynamic speakers, interactive panels, networking, and amazing performances. But before all of that, let's start with you, please, John, because I call it earlier an arm, and I've seen it I've described as a subsector. But tell us a little bit about Music TT, please. Yeah, well, Music, music TT, as you, you just described it in, in your opening salvo, when you said uh, it is about stimulating the two, the two main areas, business development and the other area of export activities of music TT, um, the music industry. And uh, the, the overall aim, of course, is to increase national or generate national wealth. Um, the, the issue of collaboration between the arms or the subsidiaries of Creative TT, which is the umbrella board, is uh, really the work between film, fashion, and music. And those three um, sub boards um, work together, but they also work individually in their various disciplines. And uh, what is critical is that in terms of the music, we, with our allocation, we work assiduously we try to network as much as we can collaborate and really about really building some of the capacity and helping as much as we can all those various sectors of the value chain of the music industry in trinidad and tobago and with that in mind hopefully we have time so i can ask what are some of those things that you all want to be hearing about in the budget come october 4 but before that, though, we're talking about reverb and the experience. So, Melissa, just before we get into that, though, what are some of those past initiatives of Music TT? So, some of the past notable initiatives over the past um, year, two years, and so forth, we partnered with the Gospel Music Awards of Trinidad and Tobago, which recognizes top local gospel artists, as well as expose them to other international gospel artists and niches. Um, we partnered with Therapy Island Stage, which was an island stage that was assigned to South by Southwest for the very first time this year and produced by our TNT's very own Calpi. So that went really well. Um, Spotlight, which is one of our flagship programs, this we are now in our fourth cohort. Um, up to 30 artists have been in this program already where we upskill them in music business acumen as well as see about their branding and whatnot. And uh, um, earlier this year, we also put out through the Spotlight program an EP, uh, a track EP, uh, which is available on all streaming platforms. And we've also submitted it to a company for sync licensing opportunities. Now, I like the fact that you speak about streaming platforms, and this takes me into conversations that we've recently held with you, John, in terms of the impact of the pandemic on your activities. What, what do the activities look like because of movements to mitigate the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, well, I think I think one of the the, the, the early companies to really take advantage of the uh, the online platforms, um, we we were pretty early with that during COVID. I mean, we we started off with some webinars, we started off with some online uh, programs. We started to take advantage early o'clock. I mean, Melissa really proacted in that area. As a matter of fact, not only uh, music TV but all the others. Um, both fashion and uh, film also practiced in that in that vein also, but I, I really want to swing you, um, DK, because there's something very interesting with the conference that's coming, in that we're really trying to, to target 
and really put the whole discussion of, of streaming into in, in one of the days. Um, in fact, all the days we're going to be talking about that um, as we look at the, the issue of cultural resilience um, and music resilience, um, the issue of the power of data analytics, and then reshaping the festival experience. Um, and these, these overarching themes were chosen really specifically because we really got to talk about some of those things to really deal with the creatives and the musicians and professionals and all those who are operating in, in the music industry and how we can assist. You have, we have things like health and wellness, right, with, which, and creativity. Uh, we have things like greeting festivals. Some of those real core topics that become critical as we talk this thing about how do we come out of the pandemic and really end up really on the on the on the bright side. You know, the name of the conference is the future is bright. So I think in terms of the streaming, you will see how that echoes every day when we talk about how we talk about all these topics and the importance of streaming for all of these uh, all of these topics. Mommy, say a word to the wise is sufficient. I feel like you give me that word to the wise. Come on, DK, stop beating around the bush. Let us talk about the conference. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, man, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to do so. And with that, Miss no, Proactive no, no, no. Managing Director, give me a little idea about the webinars in terms of like the reverb webinars and how those are distinct from the reverb experience, please. So the Reverb webinars were one-hour webinars offered at lunchtime for the casual person just wanting to take in um, information about DIY musicianship. And when we say DIY, for example, um, we had a webinar done by Antonio Aki showing musicians and artists how to produce a music video using their phone and have it be of that good quality that they're able to put out. So that's kind of DIY musicianship. And then it also focused on very niche music business topics. So, and these were brought forward by different facilitators within the music industry, music professionals. So that was just a one hour tidbit. So we decided that we really needed to go more in depth with some of these discussions, open it up to a global platform and uh, and position ourselves to be the next the caribbean of the south by southwest and midem and music and bezo and all these other conferences music conferences that um, the music fraternity would know about so this is where the transition to the reverb experience happened and one of the things i really like is one of the things that you spoke about john in terms of looking at the aspect of wellness and how that plays, what part that plays in the person who's involved in the creative sector, in the cultural sector, because we still have uh, the term essential worker and what that means. <laughs> but looking at the fact that many people who would have been deemed essential workers and going out grinding, facing what it is they're facing on the front lines and salute half hats off to you, they needed to be soothed, comforted, given more inspiration by the musicians, the player of, singers, the players of instruments, and seeing how these things dovetail into each other and looking at saying, okay, well, yes, this is currency for the soul, but it can also be monetized in a way that carries the whole conversation forward. And I see that tying directly into what you just said, Melissa, in terms of being the, having the, almost like the Caribbean element of South by Southwest, which we celebrate whenever somebody from Trinidad and Tobago or the Caribbean makes it to that stage and we say, okay, well, yes, we're doing stuff. So it's not a matter of starting home and then building so that, okay, well, people see us and see that we see value in ourselves. So they want to almost say, okay, well, let's check out what's happening there. And we have some of these people feature on our stage. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just last night I was reading an article on Aruba Red um, uh, international artists, and she was making a really solid point about the fact that when COVID came on uh, in, in, in March in terms of uh, America, um, she this whole thing about adjusting immediately to what was taking place 
is she said it crept up on them, you know, so sudden that they suddenly realized people were canceling left, right, and center to come to the concerts. And she said that thing took a toll on her, so much so that she had to get, she had to literally go for, for therapy. Um, because the, the whole thing about being a musician and living, um, touring, meeting people, moving from country, and then suddenly this whole thing, the whole thing just canceled, and then you just found yourself in a place, she called it isolation. And I, I, I mean, it is something that must really have taken a toll on many musicians. And so health and wellness is critical to that aspect, even the aspect of continuing to create. I think that's also important. And definitely this is something that we want to continue speaking about when we return from the break. Uh, John Arlen and uh, Melissa Jimenez, Music TT, Reverb the Experience. And we're getting into some of those specific uh, talks and activities when we return. Stay with us. Skateboards, building blocks, cars, trucks, and remote control vehicles, desks, clay, dough, and slime, educational and STEM toys, dinosaurs, dolls, dollhouses, and kitchen sets, board games and puzzles, outdoor fun, party supplies, school supplies, baby bathtubs and potties, curbs and play pens, bouncers and rockers, walkers, gyms and play mats, baby bottles, nursing and feeding accessories, and so much more. Visit us in-store at Forces Flagship Mackie or shop online now at dbestoys.com. No credit card required. Free delivery throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Happy Republic Day, Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome back to In Depth with me, DK Rosto. We are speaking with John Arnold, the chairman, and Melissa Jimenez, the managing director of Music TT, where on Wednesday, the 29th to the 1st of October, Reverb, the experience is taking place. So, Melissa, guide me through some of those activities, please. Activities, key speakers. What's in store? Sure. So, day one, we're looking at cultural resilience. Um, we're going to look at the topics, music policy, the orange economy, uh, recovery, economics, health, wellness, and creativity. Day two, we're looking at how can data launch new markets, metadata for dollars, and uh, social currency. And uh, day three, we're looking at the future of live streaming, greening festivals, and businesses and live music integration. So some of those speakers that you can expect, um, we have Kate Durio. She is the CEO of North America Sound Diplomacy Company, and they focus a lot on live music and business districts. Um, Keith Kirk, who is a metadata curator from Moti Music Services. Sonia Norwood, who is an entertainment manager in music, TV, and film. She's also the mother, fondly known of, as Brandy and um, RJ, um, Grammy Award winners. Uh, we have Chester Wilkins, who is known as the godfather of ISRC. Marcus Brave Boy, um, our own, who is an artist, marketing consultant, and entrepreneur, and a bunch of other persons um, that will be attending. And of course, there are the companies that help to make this happen, such as Digipreneur um, Academy, Caribbean Ideas, Synapse, Motif Music, Sound Diplomacy, New Fire Festival, and Coral Green. So we're very, very thankful for them. We have a great lineup. There's also music performances by all of our Spotlight um, alumni, as well as the current Spotlight artists. And we also have a networking session, which will also uh, marry with the Q&A sessions for all of the days. So at the end of each day, there's a networking session where all the panelists will come 
and talk about the different topics presented throughout the day, as well as persons get to ask their questions and um, network there. So after your name drop and you make the thing and you make people ambitious and stuff, I want to know who <laughs> is this for? Because a little earlier you spoke about one of the webinars being like the, the do it yourself in terms of creating your content. But who have you targeted as the ideal participant and how do they register to be a part of the experience? I don't know if both of you will take it. You just spoke, so possibly John. Oh, Mel, but... Mel, Mel, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. So who is it for? So this is for all music creators, music industry professionals, um, educators, entrepreneurs, arts administrators, students in particular, and I guess anyone who is just, you know, generally interested in the music industry or music business side of things. Um, as well as, well, I can't say music business alone, the policy side of things as well, where the creative industry is concerned. And how do they access it? So you register at reverbexperience.com. So that's rvrbexperience.com. As well as you can find information on all our social platforms. At Music of TT is the handle to find us. And I love the fact that you are able to have that mix one and then you also speak of resiliency and policy as well as economics. Because sometimes uh, it can be a little interesting to wrap your brain around both the, the creative side and then making sure, okay, well, dollars and cents, they need to mesh so that we can go forward as a, as a, a seamless whole. But with these kinds of high-powered interactions and engagements what are you looking forward to so if there's if there's a gap what does this experience fit, fill in terms of that gap i'll possibly, I'll, I'll, I'll possibly <laughs> ask you john oh yeah yeah um i i think i think several gaps um one of the critical things coming out of covid we realized i think we had a discourse on this before data the lack of data is is a big big issue, and it's a gap we have to we have to find a, a way of getting the, the the issue of data really really readily available. Coming out of this, we realized that part of the problem was that we don't have enough data to make the kinds of decisions and the kind of claims we want to make. Also, data in terms of even we as as musicians and creatives in this sector, uh, we don't pay particular attention to, to our own selves in terms of what we have to contribute towards data. So I think that has made that a very, very key thing. The second one is this whole issue about collaboration at the level of recognizing the competencies that exist in the industry, also respecting the elements of the value chain. Um, singers, um, um, composers, musicians, people understanding that all of those have their own role. Producers, publishers, um, labels, right? Um, some people, the way we are, we operate as though we are one-stop shop. But really and truly for the industry to really work really in an effective manner, we have to start respecting each of those competencies. So I, I think coming out of it, I think we're going to have a number of gaps that are going to be addressed. And cultural resilience really showing you about how you can start looking at the economics, the health and wellness, um, data, the power of data. And then where do we perform? We perform a lot of festivals, right? Carnival, jazz, you, you name it. And, and so it gives us a sense of responsibility. And I think really and truly, um, persons coming to this conference will leave with something. So they must leave with something. And I want to double dip with you for a moment before we go back to you, please, Melissa. And I forecast asking the question about some of those things that you hope you'll see in the budget. I'll ask that now. And you just spoke about data. You spoke about, uh, at the start of the conversation, you spoke of film, fashion, and music working together hand in hand. What are some of those things that you want to see in, on a policy level or the resources? Because after, even though creatives... Uh, sadly, all too used to making that five loaves and two fish work and expand. What are some of those things that you want to see 
allocated in terms of resources to help carry this forward even more? Yeah, I want to make one sentence of that. Mel, Mel can amplify. Um, I, th I think what we need would be, um, obviously, and I think everybody recognizes that the creatives, um, all the creatives, you know, all the sectors, um, all the disciplines, people, I think everybody accept the fact that they are a very important part of how we are, despite the, despite the COVID, what did people depend on? Music, relaxation, everything that had to do with the performing arts, Beethoven, basically, according to one writer, Beethoven actually made COVID easier. I, I'm, I'm just saying it in that way. And I think we are hopeful that I think um, the powers that be would certainly realize that the creative sector is very important and lot, a lot more money will be afforded to make sure that that sector sits um, comfortably. And with that, Ms. Jimenez, yeah. the last minute is yours. Melissa, well, you have closing arguments. So overall, <laughs> so overall I, I think John covered the policy part of things very well. Um, overall, I would say the reverb experience, you know, this is a convergence of all areas of music and we really want to see, you know, it grow year by year and become larger and larger than it is. We want to be able to open ourselves up to the international market more effectively and have this be the showstopper stage that people can come and explore our music. And the longest journey begins with one step. We want to thank you for taking that step in this journey towards that reality you want to create, Ms. Jimenez. So we want to thank you, Melissa Jimenez, Managing Director, as well as the Chair, John Arnold, of Music TT. And on behalf of the entire TTT team, this has been In-Depth with me, DK Rasta. Thank you for joining. National Lottery online draws for Monday, 27th September 2021.